I've been thinking recently. In fact, I, didn't I ask this group? I don't remember. I think I did. This question, do we have to prepare the way of the Lord? Do we have to prepare the way for his coming? Or are we sitting back and saying, you know, whenever it happens, I'll be happy. Well, uh, so, so, let's, so I can see you on Zoom. So uh, give me a thumbs up if you think we have to prepare the way of the Lord. Okay. So how do you prepare the way of the Lord, you ask? Well, it's in Isaiah, and I'll just run by it really quickly. Every valley has to be exalted. There are valley Christians. They're beat up. They're at the bottom looking up. And they need ministry to be brought up so that they can serve at their proper level. That is a step in preparing the way of the Lord. Every mountain must be made low. Did you ever meet a mountain Christian? They're on top of it. They got it. And they tell you so. It's pride, spiritual pride, and it has to go. It has to be removed and replaced with humility. I thought it was okay. Lord, all of a sudden, I'm not the big guy. I thought, you know, big man on campus, they used to say. The rough places have to be made plain. There are irregularities in your personality. You've got to receive the sandpaper of God and just be done with it. Be done with the anxious moments and the sharp things you say to people when, they, when they're not making you happy. Are you a rough Christian? Are you filled with grace? There right, you go. Are you rough on people or are you filled with grace? And then the last one is... Uh, makes the crooked way straight. There are crooked ways that come from the enemy, that's sin. He that sins is of the devil. Sin is the devil business. It's not your personal business. It's his business. It's something that's been planted in you. And we need to be cleansed from it. We need a bleach, so to speak. And the blood of Christ does that for us. But there is yet one other category that is almost totally ignored that you must attend to and that is the old man that is in you he's a wretch he's clever he knows how to hide his his tricks and as you go th through these processes you then discover that self is well established and so it's like a whole new battle all over again and you realize it's me oh lord it's me i'm my own most I'm my, my own greatest enemy. So the process of getting past that is that the Lord wants your mind willing. Say yes to the Lord, even though you don't feel it. Just say yes to him. Lord, have your way. You know, the Lord's prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And with that, the Lord will say, the Lord will act out he will accept you according to what you already have, not according to what you don't have. He's practical. He says, what kind of a foundation do we have here? Let's build on it. And he doesn't expect monumental leaps of faith. I think sometimes we leave the impression that we're not a successful Christian unless we're doing all these things. The Lord wants to meet you where you are. If any man, I knock on the door. If any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come in to him and dine with him. And I've said this before. I, I asked a group one time, when's the last time you dined with the Lord? And everybody looked at each other. And one young, monk, one young man raised his hand and he said, I don't think I have ever dined with the Lord. Well, that's something that you don't have. The Lord wants you to have that as an experience, but it's not there. What are the things that are necessary? You've got to hear a door knock. 
<laughs> you have to open it. That's an act of will. The Lord will guide you in that. And the reward of that, the, the finish of that, the full development of opening the door to the Lord Jesus is that you dine with him. And, and again, I've said this before, so please forgive me. The 23rd Psalm. You make me to lie down in green pastures. How many times has the Lord made you to lie down in green pastures? And I would suggest to you that these are real. It's not allegory that we, I don't know, delight in. Oh, isn't that a wonderful way to talk about this? These are things that are meant to be experienced, and the Bible is filled with them. And so if you don't see your own lack then your your Christian walk will be hobby horse because you won't see this you won't see this distinction of the difference between what you have and what you don't have. It's a blur. You think what you have is a waste of time, what you don't have you think you have. You know, it's uh it it muddies the waters. And so what I recommend if you want to make progress in the Lord is pick a few things that you know are in the Bible that you are not experiencing and go to the throne and say, Lord, I would like grace for, and then name it. Come boldly to the throne of grace to find grace and mercy to help. It helps when you go to the throne to help in time of need. So it begins with your grasp that there is a need and it's further assured when you come boldly and you seal the deal when you ask. And so the Christian life is not kind of living day by day hoping to solve the, you know, your financial problems and your relationship problems. It's, uh, it's much more specific than that. The Lord himself sees what you have and what you don't have.